hi this is Enki 35 and I am making this video to discuss um, the Ark of the Covenant which me and a f old friend of mine um, was talking about recently and obviously had some disagreements on my um, one of my Hebrew uh, the Hebrews God of the Bible is not the bull God series. So I noticed that um, True Theory 3 had made a video called The Biblical Bull God Slays a Good Man. <laughs> and so I am going to. He. He doesn't get into the uh, real reasons and the context of the story. What he does is he picks and chooses what parts he wants to tell people. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to tell the real story of the Ark and um, what it possibly could have been um, and why. Uzzah died and that it wasn't because God struck down a good man as True Theresy 3 claims. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to start here with um, 1 Samuel where the Philistines had gone to war with the Israelites and they captured the ark. And um, I'm just going to let you know real quick, in 411 you can read about Eli that went, once the ark was captured and um, that he found out that his sons had died, he fell back um, in his chair and ha obviously had a heart attack, fell and broke his neck and died. Okay, And he had taken care of the ark for 40 years. So now the Philistines have the ark. And um, so when the Philistines in Samuel 5, 1 through, well, I'm going to go ahead and read here. Um, it states that when they put the Ark of the Testimony in, or the Covenant, in um, the temple with their god Dagon, that every time they go in there, that it said that their god Dagon, their statue, would be on the ground, prostrated, and fallen over before the ark. And so they would go in there, they picked it up, the next day they come back in, this statue is fallen down on the ground again, the hands were broken off, the head was broken off, and all this other stuff. And so... Um, they were wondering what's going on with this. And then in Samuel 5, 6, it states that all of a sudden the people start getting sick in the city. And it states that the people were afflicted with tumors. And they said, the people of Ashdod, the ark of the God of Israel must not stay here with us because his hand is heavy upon us and upon Dagon, our God. And so they called together all the rulers of the Philistines and asked them, what shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? Now get that, the ark of the God of Israel. Not that God lives inside the ark. It's the ark of the God of Israel. And they said, move the ark to Gath. And so they moved it and then also in Gath, the people broke out with tumors. They all started becoming sick. So they sent the ark to Ekron. And they were fearing the presence of the ark that it would kill them also. Because it was obviously killing people there too. And called upon the Philistines to send it back to its own place or all would die. So obviously something's going on with this ark and they knew that this ark was powerful. 
So it says that death had filled the city with panic and God's hand was very heavy upon it. And those who did not die were afflicted with tumors. So this is before Uzzah was even born. Okay. So Uzzah was not the only one who died from the ark. Other people were dying that weren't even Israelites. Okay. So in 1 Samuel 6, 7, it states that, um, it says, the Philistines told them to get a new cart ready with two cows that have calved and have never been yoked and hitch the cows to the cart, but take their calves away and pin them up. So right here on this cart, they were not bulls, but were cows who had calves. So they were female, not oxen, and not bulls. So true theory, what do you have to say about the cows pulling the cart now? That it was a coward act to pull it with cows? But in any event, the Levites ended up sacrificing the cows once the cart arrived. And, they, and what happened was... Is, when they sent the cart off, they wanted to see if the cows would go straight. So if the cows went straight, then it was by the hand of God that caused the sicknesses and deaths in all these cities. And so they saw that the cows went straight up to the the city or the hills of Beth Shemesh where the Israelites were. And they ended up taking the ark. And um, so after they, re and also on the cart, the Philistines had given some reverence to the God of Israel because they had put a chest on the ark or on the cart with the ark filled with gold and images of the tumors that they had received so they would, you know, heal, they thought, because they did their paganistic acts and this is what they thought that God wanted. And they put idols and stuff inside this chest. So once the Levites, now, quote, Levites, because the Levites were the ones that were supposed to touch the ark. So the Levites, after receiving the um, cart, they sacrificed the cows and took the ark down and set it upon a rock. And the people of Beth Shemesh also died that were the area that the ark went. And it says the people of Beth Shemesh died too. And it says in 1 Samuel 6, 19 through 21, that it says, but God struck down some of the men of Beth Shemesh, putting 70 of them to death because they had looked into the ark of the Lord. So if they looked into the ark of the Lord and they died and they were struck down, there was obviously something in the ark that was so powerful that it had some kind of electrical energy. And um, so they died. And um, so in 1 Samuel 7, 1, it says, so the men of Kiriath Yarim, which is, or Yarim, uh, came and took up to the ark and took it to Abinadab's house and consecrated Eleazar, his son, to guard the ark of the Lord. And I just want to mention that it's not as if tumors just appeared on their body um, in a day. So what was in this ark? some kind of radioactive energy um, and that's why it was inlaid with gold and you know people really need to think about this because how were they getting tumors how did they just die by touching it something powerful was in this ark and if you want to get in the etymology instead of ARK what about ARC uh, an electrical arc in any event, um, just throwing in some thoughts there, because when you start 
you know, reading about this ark and this power, I mean, you got to come to a conclusion what was in this ark. And it has nothing to do with God living inside the ark. It has to do with whatever Moses had set in there, which was called the testimony. Okay. And I'll get into that later when I um, tell you about the, uh, the tabernacle. Um, not on this video, but I'll make another video about that. So in any event, it states that um, now it's at Ab Abinadab's house and Eleazar, his son, was guarding the Ark of the Lord. Now it stayed for 20 years at Abinadab's house, okay? And 20 years had passed. And the ark had resided there for all that time. And the people of Israel mourned and sought after the Lord. And so in short, in the story, Samuel the prophet um, told them that if they want the Lord uh, to be with them in the ark, they need to put away with the worshiping of false gods, the Baals and the Asherahs. Once again... Here we have the putting away of the worshiping of false gods, the Baals, plural meaning lords, gods, and Asherahs, goddesses. So they were worshiping gods and goddesses. Here's the Israelites worshiping the false gods, the Baals. So once again, truth heresy, it's stating that they were worshiping Baals. The false gods, not the God of the Hebrews. Okay. He is not what you are saying he is. So God is not Baal, even though it means Lord. Um, in 1 Samuel 8, 6, and this is before David, and this is before Uzzah. Um, it states in Samuel, Samuel 8, 6, um, that the people wanted a king appointed over them because Samuel was old and his sons did not walk in his way. And it says that the Lord said to listen to the people. He said, it's not you they are rejecting, but they have rejected me as their king, just as they did from the day I brought them out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods. So the Israelites were serving other gods and they were not following the covenant. And this is what I discussed in my other videos, because that's why they were punished all the time. Because they were serving Baal and they were sacrificing to Moloch and the Baals. Very, you have to have, it's just simple comprehension to understand what, what is being said here. Anyway, in 1 Chronicles 13, 5 through 14. And this is where we're getting into where Truth Theorcy picks one verse and puts it in his video, which is verse 10. Of chapter 13 of 1st Chronicles but um, in chapter 13 verse 5 it states that all of these years that the ark was still in the house of Abinadab they moved the ark on a new cart with Uzzah and Ahio guiding it and David and all of the Israelites celebrated and I just want you to realize that 1st Samuel was before David and Saul was appointed king during Samuel's reign. Um, Saul ended up dying and he was mutilated, hung on a wall and all this other stuff with his son, Jonathan and his other sons. And then David in this part in first Chronicles, this is about David when he became king after the death of Saul and, um, this is several years later. Again, it's not like it just happened. Snap, snap, snap. This is several years later. Um, so they moved the ark on a new cart 
with Uzzah and Ahio guiding it, and David and all the Israelites celebrated when Uzzah and Ahio had reached the Kidron threshing floor. And it states that Uzzah reached out his hand to steady the ark because the oxen had stumbled, meaning tripped, and the Lord's anger burned against Uzzah, and he struck him down because he had put his hand on the ark. Well, obviously, once again, this ark was some kind of electrical, powerful transmitter with currents, because that's why it states that the Lord's anger burned against him. Did he get burned, electrocuted? Because a lot of things happened that were extraordinary um, with this ark, especially like when they would place certain things in water in front of it. I mean, if, if electricity touches water, you get electrocuted, shocked, and burned up. But the thing is, I'll get into that later, but it states that David became angry because Uzzah had died. And see, this is where true theory doesn't go on. He just puts this in there, says it has something to do with red and blue, says it has something to do with the nature, has something to do with um, the bipolar cycles of summer and winter and all this other nonsense, which, okay, he can put it together that way and make people believe that that's what this story is actually about when in all actuality, no, it is not. And he, you know, he'll say parables, you know, because there were two oxen pulling the cart and it's supposed to be parables now and that God was a coward because he struck down Uzzah. Well, let's go on with Uzzah and find out why Uzzah died, okay? So David had become angry because Uzzah had died by the ark of God, by the ark of God. And so they left it for three months in Obed-Edom, and it was concealed. So it was concealed for three months. And in chapter 15 of 1 Chronicles 1 through 15, it states that David did not know how to handle the ark and realized the reason for Uzzah's death, that it was due to the fact that the Levites were the ones who knew the prescribed way to handle the ark as Moses had commanded in accordance with the word of the Lord. And he said that they were the ones who were supposed to do it because the Levites would put on special clothing. They would knew how to carry the ark because in the days of Moses, it states that God had given these master craftsmen the wisdom to build this instrument and they knew how to build it. And it states they made a tent, this tabernacle, and a shielding curtain to put over and block the ark. Now, when Moses, it states, because obviously the ark wasn't working until Moses had put the testimony inside the ark and had closed these lids with angels, well, with these cherubim, and their wings stretched out upward so obviously um you know cherubim are not archangels and um true theory states that the cherubim on top of the ark was gabriel which means the moon this is what he says and michael which means the sun so here we have he's saying the sun and the moon Yet, these are cherubim, not archangels. And I'm sure he'll go, well, let's see, archangels, the ark, archangels, whatever. No, difference. There's a big difference. But in any event, it doesn't mean the sun and the moon and all this other nonsense. But in any event, um, so Uzzah died because this powerful instrument, um, didn't only cause his death. It caused many deaths and illnesses, tumors. And so it obviously was radioactive. And Uzzah was not the only one that died because he was a good man. 
It was the fact of this object having great power inside of it. And the only people that were supposed to touch this object were the Levites, the Philistines, the people in Ashdod, Ekron and Gath, and Beth Shemesh died also, including Aaron's sons back in the time of Moses, by not going by the prescribed handling of the ark. And that's the end of this video. And I will get to the tabernacle next. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And um, true theory, you need to be thorough with more like context to what the story is really about instead of always trying to make the Hebrew God seem like this bull God, which you're the one who hates the bull God that you made up, but that's not who the Hebrews God is. The Hebrews God is not Baal and the Hebrews God is not Moloch. And you keep stating this, but I keep showing you that he's not. I don't know how many times it, it says it in the Bible. I mean, I do, but it's like, don't you have anything new to talk about instead of the bull god constantly you just reiterate yourself all the time and now you're trying to prove a point with only one verse read the chapter all the way through to have a full understanding and why Uzzah died because he did not know not to touch the ark and how do you know he was a good man anyway anyway have a good day, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.